Hello, on behalf of the Health Ministries team here at the Granite Bay Hilltop Seventh-day Adventist Church, I would like to welcome you here to our amazing Health Expo 2023. We're very, very excited. We have a lot of wonderful speakers here, and even though you couldn't make it here to Sacramento, California, where we're based, we have uh, many wonderful things happening here at our Health Expo, but we're excited that each of you are here uh, locally. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. And I'm very excited to announce our first speaker today. He's Dr. John Westerdahl. He lives in Santa Barbara, California. He's come up to speak today, and he is an internationally recognized authority in the fields of nutrition and wellness. He is a registered dietitian, a certified nutrition specialist, ACLM certified lifestyle medicine professional and a board certified anti-aging health practitioner. Dr. Westerdahl also is the host of a national radio talk show called Health and Longevity. He has helped thousands of people learn about the health benefits living um, using a plant-based plant -based lifestyle. So I'm very excited to welcome here to the stage today, Dr. John Westerdahl. Thank you. Well, thank you very much and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about anti-aging nutrition secrets for health and longevity, and that's a topic that a lot of people are interested in today, and I'm uh, glad to share it with you today in this amazing health center that you have here. So uh, let's see if we have our first slide up. Let me see, I should go back to the title slide. Oh, it's all there, okay, very good. So uh, it's interesting today what we see as far as what's going on in the health world today. And of course, we've been through COVID-19 several, a few years here of uh, a pandemic. But what is the, really the future of healthcare in the world today? There's many advances that we have in, in medicine today. But yet, in America, we rank way down as far as uh, around 30 of nations worldwide uh, for longevity. Yet we have the, probably the best medical system in the world. Well, we are really today in a healthcare crisis. And it has to not to do necessarily with the pandemic. It has to do with the amount of heart disease and cancer and lifestyle-related diseases that people are getting today. Now, this picture here is the hospital that I used to work at. I used to be the wellness and lifestyle medicine director and also the nutrition director for Castle, Adventist Health Castle Medical Center in Hawaii. And this hospital it was a beautiful place to work. We did a lot of work in promoting health and wellness in our hospital as part of our mission. Uh, however, you know, this is very typical of other hospitals, even in this area and throughout the United States. In fact, 70% of hospital admissions are diet and lifestyle related. In other words, if people were eating a healthy diet and they were following a healthy lifestyle, like, like the things we're going to be teaching here all day long, chances are 70% uh, of those people wouldn't be in the hospital. And we need hospitals for those emergencies and for those diseases that, you know, we can't always treat and people that, you know, follow on healthy lifestyle have to be admitted to the hospitals, but there's things that we can do. And really the future of medicine is lifestyle medicine. I'm going, let me see, are we going uh, back here? Okay, got another slide got in there. And uh, I deal a lot with what we call medical nutrition therapy, using diet to treat disease. And the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, let me see if I can go back to that uh, slide there. Yeah, lifestyle medicine is a thing of the future. And you know, you look back at Hippocrates way back many years ago. He said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So do you know, when you look at all the cultures of the world, before there was medicine, there was really food. The ancient cultures looked at food not just to nourish your body and to fill you up and satisfy you, but also that it had medicinal properties. Now, if there's anything I want you to remember throughout my lecture today is this concept. Foods from plants 
prevent the diseases that are killing us. Foods from plants actually promote health, longevity, and vitality. And in our country, in the Western countries, our diseases are really diseases of affluence. And you can see here many of the common diseases, atherosclerosis and hypertension and gout and osteoporosis, all these diseases that you see listed here, the different types of cancers, have a diet-related component. These are diseases of rich eating in many cases. You know, I call this what we call the standard American diet, SAD, SAD. We have the standard American diet, which promotes disease and it promotes premature aging. But here again, foods from plants prevent the diseases that are killing us. We need to eat more of the vegetables, the colorful fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, which are excellent sources of protein without cholesterol and saturated fat. Now, there are many different studies that have been done over the years, and this study happens to talk about nut consumption. And you can see here on the screen that uh, frequent consumption of nuts protect against heart disease. Now, this study showed that people who ate nuts frequently five times or more per week had a 51% uh, reduction in heart attacks and a 48% reduction in death from heart attacks compared to those who seldom ate nuts. Now, we're talking about heart disease. How many of you go to the cardiologist and the cardiologist tells you to eat some more nuts? How many do that? Not too many. They give you all these medicines and all these other prescriptions, but just have some nuts. And of course, I recommend some of these different nuts, and I recommend the ones that haven't been all uh, sh processed with sugar. You know, they sugar coat them or they put a lot of salt on it. You want to eat, actually, the raw nuts are the better. Uh, roasted nuts, it changes the fat a little bit, but raw is probably the best. But Nuts such as almonds and walnuts have those omega-3 fatty acids, which are important. Um, cashews, Brazil nuts, and then some, the seeds, like flax seeds, which are also high in omega-3 fatty acids. And then peanuts and almond. Uh, and if you have a peanut and almond butter, get the natural type of ones that have not been hydrogenated with the natural uh, almond butter and peanut butter. What about whole wheat bread? Here we have a study that shows the relative risk of heart attack uh, compared to the different types of uh, bread that's eaten. Look at white bread. That leads the, the, uh, of all the types of bread here. And someone that has a mixed variety of whole wheat and, uh, and as well as white bread has less heart disease risk, but whole wheat is best as far as reduction of heart disease risk. And what this slide proves is that old saying, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. Do you ever hear that? Here's scientific proof that that's true. So you want to eat a variety of whole grains. Make sure on the bread it says 100% whole grain bread. Uh, and there's many different types of whole grains that you can incorporate into your diet, oatmeal, uh, and uh, rye and the high fiber cereals that don't have all the sugar added to it. Unfortunately, a lot of them do have sh quite a bit of sugar. Brown rice instead of white rice. Whole grain pasta. You can buy pasta today made from whole grains. You don't have to have the white pasta. So the more whole grains we get in our diet, the better we are because they contain the vitamins and minerals and the white processed grains have been devitalized and minerals, all those vitamins have been removed. Now, Unfortunately, um, it, well, what the government allows some fortification where they might put a few vitamins back, but you're missing a whole bunch of, of nutrients by eating white refined grains. And vegetable consumption. This is a very interesting study. This looks at women, the probability of dying in midlife ages from 35 to 69, and you see the low intake on the far right it has much higher risk of uh, premature death compared to uh, ones that have a high intake of vegetables and fruit consumption. And then when we look at men, it's very similar. The uh, low intake of fruit and vegetable consumption, the probability of dying during middle age is significantly increased. But when you have a high intake of fruits and vegetables, the intake or the probability is much less. 
Here we have fruit and vegetable intake risk and stroke. Risk of stroke in men, incidence per 1,000. And the, uh, these are the two different types of stroke, the ischemic heart, uh, stroke and the hemorrhagic type of stroke. And you can see when you go to the right, the more fruits and vegetables that are consumed, the incidence significantly uh, is reduced. 20-year follow-up of 832 men for each increment of three servings of fruits and vegetables per day, there was a 45% decrease in the risk and death of stroke. That's very significant. Here we have food as medicine. Now, what are the protective uh, elements that we find in fruits and vegetables? Well, potassium, for instance, protects against high blood, or helps with uh, high blood pressure. Uh, folate can actually uh, help with blood pressure as well and can uh, uh, reduce the risk of uh, heart disease and strokes. Fiber helps to lower the blood pressure. It actually helps to lower, particularly the soluble fiber, helps to lower cholesterol and also helps to stabilize your blood sugar uh, levels if you have, if tend towards diabetes. And then, of course, fruits and vegetables, the protective elements that we find more and more in the research today is that they're rich in antioxidants, uh, and that, which can protect against cancer and Alzheimer's disease. And, of course, vitamin C is very rich in fruits and vegetables as well. Different ones are higher than others, but it adds more vitamin C to your diet as well. Why are foods from plants so important? Well, generally, foods from plants are low in fat, except for nuts and avocados and things like that. But, there is some, but most of them, of course, are very low in fat. They're high in fiber, they're low in calories, and they're full and loaded with antioxidants. Now, there are many ways you can incorporate more fruits and vegetables. And the, the way people tend to eat more fruits and vegetables is when they make it more available. They're all cleaned and cut up, or they're out on a, in a fruit bowl out in the, in the home. You want to make it more accessible to eat. Uh, you know, you can enjoy it in stir-fry vegetables. You can put it in soups, uh, have fresh ones out all the time, just different salads. Uh, it's important to incorporate these different ways of getting more fruits and vegetables in the diet because the average American is not getting enough fruits and vegetables in their diet, one or two servings at the, at the most in many cases. Uh, how many servings should you get uh, when we go back? Actually, um, five is better. Uh, you hear the thing about getting more five fruits and vegetables in your diet every day, but... Uh, for cancer, it's been saying that trying to get at least nine servings of fruits and vegetables in your diet is the optimal for anti-cancer levels. Now, the other culprit, of course, in the SAD diet, standard American diet, is saturated fat. And we find saturated fat primarily in animal products, in red meats, even uh, you find saturated fat in chicken and the skin. Uh, you find it in a lot of other animal food products, and meats is, the, or, is amongst the highest. But then cheese, uh, it's interesting that um, cheese is probably the highest source or consumption of saturated fat in the American diet. It used to be red meat is, but people are cutting down on red meat. And now cheese is the number one food that people are eating that's high in saturated fat, leading to high cholesterol and premature heart disease. Uh, eggs, it's, it's the egg yolk that has all the saturated fat in it. The white is all protein, so uh, white is, would be better. Don't eat the whole egg if you eat it. I like to use scrambled tofu and make that up like a scrambled egg type of dish. And of course, butter is high in saturated fat. And I have to tell you something else. Coconut oil is also very high in saturated fat. It's like eating lard. Uh, th there's a lot of health food companies there, you know, that's a, become the popular thing, the coconut oil, and cook with coconut oil, and you see products with coconut oil. That's saturated fat, too, and you want to avoid that. Palm kernel oil is the other plant source of saturated fat because most of your um, uh, plant foods have zero saturated fat or very small amounts compared to the, these animal products. So you want to stay away from coconut oil as well as palm kernel, the two, what we call the tropical oils. Uh, so saturated fats are the ones that really raise the cholesterol the most. Eating cholesterol, which is found in all animal products, 
uh, also can raise it, but saturated fat is the one that is the culprit, and we want to keep saturated fat down to a very minimum. I recommend when you get a product, try to get it as close to zero of saturated fat as possible, at least less than a gram or less, that would be better. Now, it's interesting uh, that the two Nobel laureates who did the work on cholesterol, uh, Brown and Goldstein, they received the Nobel Prize in Medicine uh, for their research on cholesterol metabolism and LDL and raising cholesterol. And they came up with a very interesting thing based on their scientific research, their Nobel Prize research. And they found that basically humans are not designed well to eat animal fat and cholesterol. In other words, our bodies are not created by God to really handle eating all that cholesterol and saturated fat. It, it, it's a killer for us. And these to Nobel Prize scientists said that really our bodies are really not designed the best for even metabolizing and utilizing the saturated fats and cholesterol. And of course, uh, their work really led to some medications to help lower cholesterol. But really, the ideal is, in many cases, you don't have to take those medications if you go on a very low saturated fat, high plant-based type of diet. Uh, what foods contain cholesterol? Well, the, no, what foods do not ten, contain cholesterol, I should say? All the plant foods have no cholesterol in them. Cholesterol is only found in the cells of animals and in animal products. There is no cholesterol in any. Some people say, well, aren't avocados high in cholesterol? No, they're high in, in monounsaturated fat, but there's no cholesterol in avocados. So you, that's one of the benefits for eating this vegetarian type of diet is that you don't get all that cholesterol from these plant foods. And they can fill up without any cholesterol and very low saturated fat. Now, the idea of high blood cholesterol, of course, leads to atherosclerosis. Here we have an artery that is uh, layered with uh, cholesterol plaque there and uh, to the point where it, it inhibits the blood flow and that's what can lead to a heart attack. Here we have uh, another artery. Uh, usually um, you don't see signs of the disease till the artery is about 90 to 95 percent plugged that you, people start really noticing it. And then of course when it's plugged up totally, that's what leads to uh, a, a heart attack. Now, by the way, anyone have an idea when this process, at what age do you think the process of atherosclerosis starts, that we see the artery starting to build up the plaque? Anyone have an idea? Some people say uh, 18, well, I heard one person say 40, one person said 18, because when they looked during the Korean War and the Vietnam War, when men were dying really young, around that age, they would... Um, look at their arteries and they had severe atherosclerosis. But it's younger than 18. Anyone have an idea? Younger than 10. Actually, we begin to see the beginnings of the streaking of cholesterol plaque on the arteries at age 3. So do you think that's because the kids are smoking too much? Do you think they're getting too much stress, so they're getting cholesterol? Is that, they give stress, but uh, I don't think that's it. Why do you think that's true? McDonald's. They're feeding the young kids the whole milk, uh, and they're giving these junk foods. And it's really sad, it's sad today to see what's going on. I was in the Surgeon General's, I was in a room where the Surgeon General was speaking, and he said, the way we are going today with the kids and the obesity and the bad diet that they have. He says, in this generation, we're going to be seeing many parents outliving their own children. Today, we see young kids, seven-year-old children with adult-onset diabetes, type 2 diabetes. We see even teenagers where the, the plaque significantly blocked up. So... This is a real problem, and, and I think in many cases it's child abuse, the way many parents feed their kids, all, you know, all these rich, fat, you know, things, uh, three times a day, and that's leading to heart disease and other chronic diseases as well. Now, the good news is this, and this kind of think, makes me think of how God forgives us for our sins, 
as, as we know as Christians here at the church, uh, we can actually reverse heart disease. In other words, that pl plaque uh, buildup you see in the far top there is almost 90%, but scientific research shows that we can actually reverse the process of atherosclerosis by going on a whole food plant-based diet. And one of my colleagues from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, Dr. Dean Ornish, he is the one that published the first studies to show that when you go on a low-fat vegetarian diet, you can reverse heart disease. And he did this by taking patients who had atherosclerosis. He put them on a very low-fat, uh, whole food, plant-based diet. And in one year, he saw reversal of atherosclerosis. These are the PET scans. The left side um, uh, shows the when they started the study. This is an average person that started the study. And the right side is where you see more color. That's the heart. And the more color you see in there indicates there's more circulation going through the heart. The arteries were opening up. And there was actually 82% of the patients that were following this diet had actual reversal of atherosclerosis. Now, he went a year, he went uh, and did another f uh, study and put them, kept them on for five years, and they had further reversal of atherosclerosis. So you see that you can reverse this process by going on this very low-fat, plant-based diet. And uh, it's interesting that he actually had one group he put on the American Heart Association diet, the diet that all the doctors recommend you go on if you have heart disease. And he showed that those patients on the whole did not improve or they even got worse. So Dr. Ornish's uh, statement really is that if you really want to reverse heart disease, you need to go on this low-fat, vegetarian type of diet and lifestyle in order to get reversal of disease. Now, when we look at cancer, the second leading cause of death, you can see that uh, these are the different uh, percentages of causes of cancer in the United States. And a lot of people focus in on pollution. But look at, four, uh, based on the research, 4% of cancers in the United States are caused by pollution. And, or they'll talk about radiation, 3%. And these other things are very low levels, but look what the big ones are. Dietary is 35% and tobacco is 30%. And luckily, a lot of people are quitting smoking, but just those two account for 65% of the causes of cancer in the United States today. So the combination, if you smoke, quit smoking, definitely. You gotta do that. A lot of people are dying from heart disease or cancer from that, lung cancer. But the combination of diet and avoiding things like tobacco are very important. Cancer prevention guideline number one is to choose most of the foods that you eat from plant sources. Very important. More fruits and vegetables. In fact, the phytochemicals in fruits and vegetables, every stage of cancer from uh, your normal going on to uh, where it's becoming more invasive every step, those compounds, those phytochemical compounds and other compounds that you find in those plants are actually blocking that process. So it's like chemotherapy using phytochemicals, right, from the plants. So I recommend eating a rainbow. I lived in Hawaii for a number of years, and uh, that was the slogan is eat a rainbow. Eat the more colorful fruits and vegetables that you can eat, the better they are. And they all these uh, natural pigments that God has put in these wonderful colors uh, that are, we find in the different fruits and vegetables have different aspects, so like some of them pro uh, protect against DNA damage. Others uh, prevent dementia. Others uh, may help with uh, prevention of heart disease. So you want an array of the different colors of fruits and vegetables, and at least five servings a day, but I'm recommending strive for nine. And that's hard to do. Not many people can do that, but at minimum of five fruits and vegetable servings per day. Cancer prevention number two is to limit intake of high-fat foods, particularly from animal sources. Going towards plant sources of protein, like your beans and your legumes, these are rich sources of protein. You find protein in even lettuce, you find some protein. You find protein naturally occurring in many plant foods, 
uh, but some are higher than others, particularly the uh, legumes and beans, and also the whole grains are good sources of protein, too. So we want to do that, uh, limit them from animal sources. Now, this charcoal broil steak, and the way people cook these meats, also produces carcinogens. A charcoal broil steak, this is a about two pound charcoal broil steak, produces a uh, very potent ant, uh, carcinogen called benzopyrene. It has the equivalent of that carcinogen as you would find in 33 packs of cigarettes, in just that one. Uh, now, some people say, yeah, but uh, you're eating it, you're not smoking it. So you, that's a different thing. However, when they feed rats benzopyrene, they develop tum tumors, so it is a deadly carcinogen. Studies show that, uh, and these happen to do with uh, the Adventist Health Study, where you had ca average California man, and then you had the average uh, Seventh-day Adventist man had a little lower uh, rate of the risk of prostate cancer. However, the Adventist, in the Adventist study, the Seventh-day Adventist men who had no animal products had a third the uh, uh, risk of developing prostate cancer compared to the other populations. Now, let's talk about anti-aging nutrition secrets. You know, we talk, how many of you like to live to be 100 years of age? Is Dr. Scharfenberg in here? He's going to be 100 in, in he's, not here, he's not in here. I thought he was in here. But uh, he's going to live, be 100 in two, two months. So uh, it is possible. If you, a lot of people don't raise their hand because they think, oh, I don't want to live to be 100 because you'll be sick and you'll be in a wheelchair and you'll be in the hospital or whatever. But if you're healthy and vibrant, like Dr. Scharfenberg, who is a member of this church, uh, that would be great. And we really have the genetic potential and physical potential to live to be 120 years of age. Even the Bible tells us that. And uh, the, I'm, a, I'm also uh, uh, board certified in the American, Col the Academy of, Nutri uh, excuse me, in the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And the American uh, Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine uh, points out this is kind of a history of what the average life expectancy is about 25 years back in 1796 and 1896, 48. Uh, between 2006 and whatever, it, they're predicting that people will start, can get to 120 and maybe even up to 146, does it say there? Before, before t uh, 2046, I should say. So what's de let's talk about aging. What's the defi definition of aging? It's the process of growing old or showing signs of growing old. That's kind of the old definition. If you look at today, we, could, we may redefine it differently, but usually when we think of gr aging, we think of things like wrinkles and sun damage and less hair and r increased hair in some areas, uh, poor memory, lack of sleep, poor digestion, reduced circulation, and chronic diseases. And there's two different ages that we have. We have the chronological age, that's the number of uh, days or months or years that a person is when they're alive. And there was what we call the biological age, and that's the health and performance of a person's uh, body systems. It's a predictor of longevity. So in other words, you uh, may be 40 years old chronologically, but you eat, eat, you're in such a healthy lifestyle by eating right and exercising that you're, you're, you may be having the body of someone that may be 30 years old, 10 years younger, depending on, on what it is. Now, on the other hand, if you are 40 years of age chronologically and you have a bad lifestyle and you're overweight and you smoke and you uh, eat a lot of junk foods and all that, you might be really 50 years old from a biological standpoint. And if you want to figure out your chronological age and how old you are, we, there's a, you can go online, it's a free test that uh, ShareCare has. You can go to that uh, website and you can fill it out, put in your health habits, and, and if you have information on your blood pressure, add that, and it'll figure out how old you really are, what we call the real age. Uh, the idea is really, our goal is to live long, have excellent quality of life, you know, because usually, as this chart shows, when you're over 40, it's all downhill from there, right? But if you eat and, right and you exercise and do the right things and avoid those harmful things, you could live a much longer life and it'd be better if you just 
drop dead real fast, like you fall, you die in your sleep or something. Now, Jack Lang used to say that the goal in life is to die young as late as possible. And by the way, at 2.30, we're going to be talking about Jack Lang. So you want to come there because Elaine Lelane, Jack Lang's wife, is going to be on the screen here. She's coming in to give a little lecture and some of her tips. And that will be a wonderful program. So make sure you come back at 2.30. Now, what's the definition of anti-aging? Now, we're not against aging, but anti-aging is to stop, slow, or delay the aging process. And in some ways, you can reverse the aging process and say, well, wait, how can you reverse the aging process? Well, if you're 50 years old and you're overweight and you're smoking and you're, you're just in bad shape and all that, and then you get on this really healthy program and you lose that weight, get off the cigarettes and uh, start getting on an anti-aging plant-based diet, you see improvements that you're re actually reversing your aging process. So it is possible. Here are the rules of anti-aging. Don't get sick, don't get old, and don't die. Okay? Remember that. <laughs> and here, according to the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, are the anti-aging diet recommendations. Eat a variety of plant foods. Maintain a healthy weight. Choose a diet low in fat and cholesterol. Choose a diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And use sugar and salt and sodium in moderation. Now, there are many theories of aging. We're going to go through them quickly. We don't have time to go through them in depth. One of them is the caloric intake theory. In other words, if you eat a lot of calories all the time, that promotes aging and promotes oxidation, free oxidation uh, compounds and damages cells. So eating less uh, can help us to live longer. And they've done this in rat studies. They showed 50% increase in longevity with uh, these rats, uh, 30 to 60% decrease in a caloric intake when they reduce their caloric intake. There are different ways to uh, help. Uh, some people do fasting, and distilled water fasting can be beneficial periodically to help uh, to uh, get rid of the bad uh, cells that are damaged and so forth and break them down. And it's uh, uh, something that a lot of research is going on. And then your menu breakfast is water, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> and doing that for a few days can actually be beneficial, actually, in, in helping to um, contribute to longevity. Now, Dr. Walter Longo, who I do some work with as far as uh, his fasting mimicking program, has developed a program where uh, you can uh, get the same results of going on a distilled water fast, but you have small amounts of healthy plant-based foods to go along for five days and, and has developed a uh, program. And I have information about this at my uh, table if you want more about this. And you go on the five-day uh, fasting mimicking program and you get the same results if you went on the distilled water fast for five days, but you're not going to be hungry like you are with a distilled water. You're still going to get very small amounts, low calories, and very scientifically advanced uh, little foods like crackers and maybe some bars and some soups that you would have during that five days. And you go through the process of uh, uh, what we call autophagy, where your uh, garbage cells, the cells that you need to replenish, break down and they take those elements to rebuild healthy new cells. And this is uh, a, a research going on now at the Longevity Center and uh, over there at USC that uh, Dr. Walter Longo is doing that. If you want more information, I'm at my booth. I can tell you more about this. Another theory of aging is chronic inflammation theory. In other words, the foods on the right are anti-inflammatory. They're beneficial. But on the right, the left is the, the vegetables, right? And on the right is the foods that promote inflammation. So the American diet, the sad American diet, promotes inflammation. And here we have the anti-inflammatory foods that we need to get more of in our diet every day. There's the immune theory, and that has to do basically by eating a healthy diet, exercising, getting plenty of rest, living an overall healthy lifestyle, you're helping to enhance and build up your immune system to fight against disease. Then there's the free radical theory. Free radicals are very unstable compounds that can damage your cell membranes, and uh, they are caused by eating lots of fried foods, the bad type of foods we were talking about, 
uh, smoking, alcohol consumption, being exposed to environmental pollutants. These, they promote free radicals. These fra free radicals damage your cells. Uh, they promote cancer, heart disease, premature aging, and cataracts, and these are all things that people do that promote free radicals going through their body and damaging their cells because health begins at the cellular level. And antioxidants that you find in the fruits and vegetables fight against those free radicals, preventing them from doing the damage. And what are the antioxidants? There's the vitamins such as C and E, the carotenoid pigments that you find in fruits and vegetables, lycopene, for instance. Uh, lutein, the flavonoid pigments in uh, the anthocyanins, these are the red, purple, and blue colors, and all, and all these actually are antioxidant compounds that can protect those pro-oxidants from damaging your cell membranes. Vitamin C is one of my favorite vitamins because I used to work with Dr. Linus Pauling. I was a nutrition assistant with him at the Linus Pauling Institute of Science and Medicine. He was a big proponent of taking a lot of vitamin C, both in food and taking some additional supplements to get the high levels. These foods are the highest ones in vitamin C. We can go down the list, but we're, I got to go through more, more foods here. Uh, Aging starts at the cellular level. Our bodies are made of cells, and aging occurs when there is a cell death. The body's ability to generate new cells diminishes as the years advance. So we've got to keep these cells and the cell membranes healthy, and then part of that has to do with the telomere theory. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who got the Nobel Prize in uh, 2009 for her research, that's me with her, uh, some of these words aren't showing up, but they, they studied telomeres. And what are telomeres? Telomeres are your chromosomes. At the end of the chromosomes, it's like a pencil eraser. It's what we, that's what your telomere is. And what happens as we get older, uh, you can see there, there's age 20, the end cap of those telomeres is large, and when, they, when you get older, you diminish them, and that has a lot to do with your lifestyle, and that is what promotes aging, is as that you lose your telomeres, the longer your telomeres, it promotes a longer health span, the shorter your telomeres promotes a shorter health span. So the research shows by going on a healthy dietary program and following healthy lifestyle habits, you can actually lengthen your telomeres if they're shorter. And there are tests that you can do to see how long your telomere, telomeres are. These are the foods that, um, oh, some of the words are missing on the slide, but these are the, wor these are the foods that are the things that uh, cause shorter telomeres, red meat, saturated fats, omega-6 poly. Uh, unsaturated fats, sweetened drinks and sodas, white bread, alcohol consumption, and this is what promotes longer telomeres, plant-based diet, all the things we were talking about, whole foods, rich in nutrients, antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, and omega-3s. Lack of sleep shortens your telomeres. Uh, too little sleep, uh, lack of exercise, I should say, shortens uh, your telomeres. Too little sleep shortens them, and high stress, Good exercise, good sleep, and stress management helps to lengthen telomeres. Then there's the cross-linking theory of aging. That has to do with proteins and sugars combining. This basically has to do with getting too much sugar in your diet, causing uh, uh, brown uh, uh, tissues to start to brown, and uh, it's like a caramel caramelization that goes on at the cellular level by high sugar and protein uh, cross-linking together. Now, there's one scientific truth with all these different theories of aging, and that is, regardless of what causes disease or aging, the final common pathway is that there is a reduction in water in our cells and tissues. As we get older, the cell membranes dry up, they get thinner, and, and the water is lost. This is called the science of cellular water. Dr. Howard Murad, uh, boy, I'm missing the words on that slide, I don't know why. But Dr. Howard Murad is a colleague of mine. He's the uh, doctor who uh, is an anti-aging specialist and also a dermatologist, but he has pioneered a lot of this research, uh, and I've been involved with some of that research with him on what we call the science of cellular water. And what it has to do with this, on the left side is a cell membrane, and it's a healthy cell. You can see the cell membrane is very good, and it's keeping that water in there. But as we have bad lifestyle habits and as we age, uh, 
those cells, those membranes become thinner and drier, and we start losing the moisture out of the, the cell to the point uh, where the cells are damaged and die. However, we can rebuild those cells through the right type of diet and through the type of, right type of lifestyle. Uh, you know, the cell membranes are made with uh, protein and lecithin and other healthy types of fats. And um, so, no matter what, if, if you increase the cellular hydration, we increase the chances of a young, uh, living longer and healthier. Uh, so, what is the key? Is to eat more, eat your water, eat more fruits and vegetables, raw fruits and vegetables, the water that gets into the cells of those plant foods is easier to get into our cells uh, and fill our cells with the hydration. And there's other benefits because the water in the raw fruits and vegetables also has antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, which are very important. So eat your water. So eating a healthy plant-based diet also is a diet where you're eating more water. It might be more important than the water you drink, believe it or not. The water uh, structurally is a little bit different that it gets into the cells of, of the plant. Increasing cellular hydration to the path and pro promotes wellness and health and longevity. So very important. Uh, brain health, uh, of course, we have all these billions of brain cells. This type of diet, this plant-rich diet, also helps in and I'm missing some, quite a bit of slides, uh, words here. Um, now I'm going to go over quickly, I'm going to switch over real quickly to d looking at the cultures of longevity. Uh, several years ago, National Geographic did a study and they had identified these regions they call blue zones, areas of the world where people live the longest and healthiest. And they identified three areas in the world, Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, and Loma Linda, California. The blue zones, Dan Buettner is the one, is the uh, National Geographic, um, he's the uh, explorer of longevity. And uh, the reason they call them blue zones is they, on the map, they took a blue marking pen and they circled the areas where people in the world live longer. That's why they came up with blue zones. And these are, uh, th since that time, there's uh, some other blue zones, but they've identified, so Loma Linda, uh, Nicoya uh, Peninsula in South uh, Costa Rica, I should say, in Sardinia, Italy, and then also in Greece, I Ikaria, Greece, and then uh, Okinawa, Japan. Uh, the commonalities between these people that are cultures that live, many of them living to be 100 years of age, is they don't smoke. There's uh, importance uh, uh, placed on family, regular exercise, social engagement, uh, engagement in spiritual or religious activities. Uh, boy, some of the words are slipping there. Moderate caloric intake, and they are primarily on a plant-based diet. Uh, it's semi-vegetarian or vegetarian. Of course, the, the Loma Linda uh, population is more vegetarians. So there, Okinawa is one of the countries, and one of my good friends and colleagues, uh, he lived in Hawaii later on doing research, is Dr. Bradley Wilcox, and he studied the people in Okinawa and how they lived and why they lived so long, the ones that lived to be 100 years of age or older. And um, these are just some of the different people in Okinawa at different ages. Here, these guys are all over 100 years of age, very active. They don't have the Alzheimer's like we do in our country, and uh, they have a very healthy lifestyle. What do they do? Low-calorie diet, plant-based diet, lots of unrefined carbohydrates. It's a low-protein diet. Too much protein, particularly animal protein, ages you. Uh, it's low in sodium. They eat 9 to 17 servings of vegetables every day. 7 to 13 servings of whole grains and 2 to 4 servings of calcium-rich foods were primarily in the form, not in milk, but in tofu and also in um, seaweed. 2 to 4 servings of flavonoid-rich antioxidant green tea and soybeans uh, and 2 to 4 servings of fruit per day. Very little protein, only about 10% of the day's calories is protein. Eat little sodium, eat infrequent sweets, uh, lots of water, healthy types of oils. And it's interesting when you look at the quantity, here's 280 calories on the Okinawa diet to the left, and here's 280 calories on the American diet. What's going to fill you up the most? 
<laughs> the Okinawa diet, right? Now, the other cu culture is Seventh-day Adventists. That's the dear to our heart here at, uh, at our church here because Seventh-day Adventists have been studied for a long time. And, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist lifestyle is made up of people who uh, don't smoke, really, uh, avoid alcohol, don't drink alcohol, and eat relatively a, high, a healthy diet, more of a plant-based diet. And, of course, many Seventh-day Adventists are vegetarians and also vegans. And uh, that is the ideal. The studies on Seventh-day Adventists show that one, those that are following a vegetarian diet and lifestyle live almost 10 years longer than the average American. And by the way, that's longer. And I have a lot of friends who, uh, I went to Loma Linda University, the Seventh-day Adventist University, Hulda Crook, she lived to be 103. She was a nutritional researcher. I used to know her real well. Uh, this is Dr. Ellsworth Wareham. He lived to be 104 years of age and was uh, followed a very strict vegan diet and was a cardio cardiothoracic surgeon and was even doing surgery at the Loma Linda Medical Center until he was 95 before he retired. And our own Dr. John Scharfenberg, who's a member of this church, he's going, he's 99 years old in December, he'll be 100 years old. And I'm gonna be presenting him with a Lifetime Achievement Award at 2.30, so come back here at 2.30 and sit, meet Dr. Scharfenberg. And Jack Lane, Jack Lane was actually raised a Seventh-day Adventist as a little boy, his mom was a very devout Seventh-day Adventist, so I kind of put him in here. Uh, he said, exercise is king, nutrition is queen, when you put them together, you have a kingdom. And he lived to be 96 years of old, and there I am, 96 years old, and I, there I am with him, and Elaine Lelaine will be here on the screen. She, uh, she's coming in through Zoom at 2.30, and we'll be doing an interview with her. By the way, my friend that did the studies on the Okinawans that lived to be 100 years old, he said he found out when he was in Okinawa there were several Seventh-day Adventists in Okinawa. So he said the ideal would it be an Okinawan Seventh-day Adventist. You got two blows, your two blue zones in one, right? Now, I'm going to talk about Hunza, and Hunza is a region that I have studied. I used to be vice president of the Hunza Research Institute. My good friend, Dr. J.M. Hoffman, went to Hunza to study these people, where ages have been reported as high as 130 years of age, many people living to be 120, and of course, a lot of the population getting to the 100 and older, and that's the book that he wrote. I have that at my uh, table if you want to take a look at it. Uh, these men uh, from Hunza are all over 100 years of age, over 100. This man's 120, no Alzheimer's, sense of humor, and really good health, very low cholesterol. And they're very active. They get plenty of fresh air. This is a region up in the Himalayan mountains, very isolated. And uh, they live a long, healthy life, all organic types of foods, lots of grains. And apricots is a food that they eat every day in their diet, lots of green leafy vegetables. And uh, they dry the apricots. They have apricots almost every meal. I mean, every day, uh, whether it's morning or later on in the day, too. So this is just some of the, their diet. 80% of the vegetables that they ate were raw um, and 20% lightly cooked. And some of the Hunza bread. Uh, they did eat uh, only 1% of their total calories came from any animal products. They ate meat, meat uh, very, it averaged three ounces per month. Uh, Actually, they, they, it's mostly the 13 days of the year for religious holidays, they did eat uh, some meat, but otherwise they're completely vegetarian. So whole food, plant-based diet is the ultimate anti-aging diet. And I'm going to go through some of the, uh, quickly here, through some of the superfoods. I'm going to go through these real quickly, so you got to take notes fast. <laughs> Acai berries. Acai, how many have had acai? They're very popular today. They come from Brazil. It's from a palm tree. Uh, Dr. Nicholas Paracone, an anti-aging specialist, says they're one of the top 10 superfoods. They're rich in antioxidants, combat premature aging. They combat free radical damage. They're a source of anthocyanin flat flavonoids that are believed to prevent heart disease. Uh, acai berries, in a study uh, that was done in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry, showed that acai berry extracts reduce risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. And you can go to your smoothie shops today, and the, even Costco sells acai berries, frozen that you can use, and put them in, make them into smoothies, or add them to your foods. 
and to get those benefits. Almonds, one of the best, healthiest nuts. It's rich in monounsaturated fats, which is the healthy types of fats. It also has uh, good fiber and is a good source of plant protein. Uh, Nutrient-rich, uh, here we have monounsaturated fats, protein, and they contain a very high source of the important fat-soluble antioxidant, vitamin E. Some of the benefits with almonds shows that they protect cells from oxidative uh, damage leading to premature aging. They assist with blood sugar control and a healthy heart. Apples, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Well, I want to mention, if you get apples, make sure you get only organic apples. Don't get the, the conventional apples because they do use pesticides. But they contain poly, uh, natural polyphenol antioxidants. They protect against free radicals. They maintain good health. Uh, good source of pectin. Pectin is a water-soluble fiber that actually helps you lower the bad LDL cholesterol. And eating apples in a diet helps you to maintain your a good blood sugar if you tend to be towards diabetes. Now, one French study showed that eating two apples per day resulted in the average drop of cholesterol levels by 10%, which is significant because that converts to a 20 to 30% reduction in heart disease risk. A nurse's study showed that apple eaters enjoy lower risk of tumors, uh, lung cancer, and cardiovascular problems. The Mayo Clinic showed that uh, apple consumption helped to prevent the growth of prostate cancer cells. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you get apples, only get organic certified apples and apple products because uh, they are listed as one of the more contaminated ones with pesticides. So organic is the best way to go. Apricots, that's the food of Hunza, rich in all those beautiful antioxidants and carotenoids. And in Hunza, you know, they don't really die of uh, cancer or heart disease. They die of old age and uh, typical way of living a long life and they go to sleep one night and they don't wake up in the morning. That's the way I'd, I want to die. <laughs> Good source of vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, high fiber and potassium. Uh, they protect against free radical damage and help maintain healthy skin. And this, it's a staple, of course, in the Hunza diet. Blueberries I have every day. Uh, it's nice you can get them frozen organic ones like at Costco. You can get a big bag of them and put them in your smoothies or use them in your food. But blueberries are very powerful antioxidants. They have anthocyanins and flavonoids. flavonols. Uh, they fight uh, free radical damage. The power of blueberries strengthens tissue and blood vessels. They protect uh, eye health. Uh, they ward off varicose veins and protect against heart disease and cancer. So get your blueberries uh, in your diet. Uh, blueberries contain substances that prevent carcinogens from binding to DNA in cells. So this is why they're also quite important for prevention of cancer. And we know that blueberries also slow the and reverse age-related brain damage. So they're brain healthy, a brain healthy berry day, healthy berry day, including your diet. Broccoli is the anti-cancer vegetable. It's my favorite. It's rich source of calcium. You absorb the calcium in broccoli better than you do in milk. Uh, so it's high in calcium and vitamin K, which is also important in building healthy bones. Uh, they pre they uh, prevent cell degeneration because they are rich in flavonoids. Sulforaphane and indols, these are the, the anti-cancer properties that we find in, in um, uh, broccoli. These are like, when you eat broccoli, it's like putting cancer bombs in your body. Think of that. They have anti-inflammatory properties. And because they're cruciferous vegetables in that category, it has the anti-cancer properties. Cinnamon, that's the, that spice that you can put in. You can, and actually, Nathan Pritikin recommended cinnamon powder. You sprinkle on food instead of sugar because it has kind of a sweet, nice flavor to it. But cinnamon, uh, here again, I recommend when you get cinnamon, try to get cinnamon organically. Because sometimes they process it or they make it and grow it on the tree barks that uh, they may use some type of chemicals. Uh, it's a traditional natural remedy. It's an anti-inflammatory uh, product. Uh, it's a carminative, which means it ha it's a gas reliever. It helps relieve gas, like if you have cinnamon tea, for instance. Uh, it helps to control blood sugar. It increases glucose metabolism in cells. Uh, boy. 
and mimics insulin function. I'm missing some words at the top. But there's a compound in cinnamon that has uh, anti-diabetic properties. Citrus fruits, of course, are all rich in vitamin C, and the colors add a lot of nutrients to the diet. Uh, they're rich in bioflavonoids. They contain good so sources of fiber. And, uh, you, you know, I recommend g trying to eat the whole fruit, uh, the orange, not the orange juice is too concentrated in sugar. It's better to eat the whole orange or the whole citrus fruit. Concord grapes. Um, are very, it's a pharmacy of healthful nutrients. Uh, they add to life extension, uh, heart disease, uh, healthy heart polyphenol antioxidants, uh, and it's the source of resveratrol. That's that compound they say they find in wine, you know, in the French paradox. You don't have to drink wine to get your heart benefits. It's the alcohol is the problem in wine. Just drinking a little bit of the Concord grape juice that has not been sweetened actually has the same type of benefit. So you're better off eating the grape as the, uh, putting the alcohol in the body that does the damage. This, it's a better source and better, healthier way to do it. Get these uh, compounds and resveratrol and so forth. Flax seeds are the seed. Now, you have to crush the seeds if you want to get those omega-3 fatty acids in it. Otherwise, the seeds are just going to go through you. So flax seeds, ground flax seeds are important. It has anti-cancer properties because of the lignin compounds and the omega-3 fats that are in it, uh, they, which can help in slowing tumor growth. Uh, so here we have a good source. You don't have to have fish oil. Flaxseed is much better. Garlic, I spent two years of my career studying garlic. Garlic has definitely properties to help you cardiovascular benefits and lower your risk of heart disease, improves immunity. It's one of the anti-cancer foods that the Department of Agriculture rated as probably the top of the anti-cancer foods. Ginger, a great uh, herb. You know, when, uh, when you get an uh, upset stomach, what do the doctors used to tell you to drink? Ginger ale. Now, it's a lot of the ginger ale today it has artificial ginger in it, but uh, natural ginger is a natural remedy in digestive aid and has anti-inflammatories. Goji berries is another plant food that you find very rich, one of the richest uh, nu uh, nutrient-dense foods on the face of the earth, used in Tibet for 1,700 years, uh, used as a traditional Chinese medicine for longevity and strength building, and as I said, one of the very rich antioxidant uh, foods has uh, all types of nutrients in it. Goji berries are nice things you sprinkle on your salads. You, get, you can find them in the health food stores. Uh, these are some of the different compounds that you find in goji berries that protect uh, against DNA damage and the, preventing free radical damage. Uh, one study showed that, that it helps to improve r immune response by enhancing the activity of the immune cells. Kale, a good source of calcium, uh, has become very popular lately, and uh, I recommend using kale uh, in your diet as much as you can because it's so rich in calcium and other nutrients like beta carotene and other compounds as well. Uh, also, it has the lutein and zeaxanthin that helps protect against macular degeneration. I lived in Hawaii. I had a mango tree in my backyard. Mangoes are great, too. Uh, all types of vitamin A and vitamin C in them. A lot of uh, polyphenol antioxidants um, and um, a lot of benefits to getting more mangoes in your diet. Mushrooms are known to have anti-cancer properties, and I'm running low on my time here, so I'm going to go through these quickly. Um, but include mushrooms in your diet as much as you can. They are very healthy. Now, oats, of course, is one of the best foods to have for lowering your cholesterol. I have oatmeal every day in my diet in the morning, whether I put it in a smoothie or I have it in a bowl. Um, uh, very good source of the uh, soluble fiber that helps to lower the bad type of cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol. The Nelso is good for people to help m uh, balance and improve their blood sugar control. Steel coats are the best form because they're less uh, processed uh, and to help to lower, they're much lower in glycemic index than the rolled oats, but ro any way you can get oats in the diet is a good way, really. Papayas, uh, also a, a wonderful food, one of the richest nutrient-dense foods there is with all these carotenoids, and it, they, it shows, study shows it can help defend against visible signs of aging. Many benefits to getting more pot, uh, papaya in your diet. And pomegranate and pomegranate juice is very important uh, as an antioxidant to help neutralize free radicals. 
These are some of the different uh, polyphenolic compounds that we find in pomegranates. And we're lucky here in California, a lot of pomegranates, right? Fresh pomegranates as well as the pomegranate juice. Uh, prostate cancer, uh, drinking eight ounces of pomegranate juice per day slows progression of localized prostate cancer in the research and actually is a natural internal um, a way of uh, promoting, uh, prevent, preventing sun damage. Uh, soybeans, I can tell you there's a lot of bad uh, information negative on soybeans, but they are very healthy and they actually have anti-cancer properties. I'm going to have to go through these real quick. What about supplements? I believe in nutrition supplements, but I believe that the most important thing is to make sure you get your fruits and vegetables and all that. And if you want to take a supplement to complement a healthy diet, you can't take supplements to replace an unhealthy diet. That doesn't work. If you want to complement a healthy diet, taking certain nutritional supplements can be also beneficial, in particular some of them for anti-aging. Uh, and there's many things that we will never find in fruits and vegetables, so supplements may don't cover everything. Uh, so what I want to mention is what you eat today is walking and talking tomorrow. Now, there's many things. We're focusing on nutrition and anti-aging here in this lecture, but there's other things you've got to incorporate, drinking plenty of water, getting good sleep, exercising, I think spiritual um, a philosophy of life, uh, going to church regularly is a healthy longevity habit. That's been researched and shown. But I like this quote. We are indeed much more than what we eat. Nevertheless, but what we eat can nevertheless help us be much more than we are. I want to mention I have a radio show. In fact, it's on at 12 o'clock today if you go on lifetalk.net. Uh, on health and longevity, and uh, that's my website you can go to and get a link to uh, my shows on health and longevity to get a lot more information. Now, we're not going to have a question and answer session today, but I will be at my table today, uh, right after this, and um, you can ask me any questions there at that time. And I want to mention that I covered a lot of information, but it's all summarized in this booklet. In fact, there's more information in here. Uh, it's called Anti-Aging Secrets of the Bible that I wrote. And uh, this is only $1 if you want to stop by my booth and pick one up because I have all the information we talked about pretty much in here as well as additional information, and you can get that. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have at the booth. Okay, and make sure that you come back at 2.30 to hear Elaine Lalane and also Dr. Scharfenberg. Okay, thank you.